Hi guys, Dana Alexander here from Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Groomer. Uh, we're just finishing up class here with a live demonstration on a miniature schnauzer pet breed trim. So I thought I'd come on and let you guys know my best tips and tricks for getting these done fast and efficiently. So what the Everyday Pet Groomer and Prestige Dog Grooming School is all about is high quality grooming that is very efficient, that is um, very modern, very current, but also the best and fastest and most efficient techniques to be able to get the job done quickly, easier on your body, easier on the dog, and without breaking the bank with equipment. So I kind of call myself the minimalist groomer. We show you the minimum amount of equipment that you need to get everything done in a in a way that's efficient so that you can get that high quality result, but also be still extremely profitable. So we're gonna show you a miniature schnauzer breed trim today. I've prepped this guy by bathing and drying him. Actually, my students prepped this guy. Uh, come here, everybody. Sorry guys, two seconds. We're gonna switch cameraman here. Um, just let me switch your cameraman and then we'll get you started. Two seconds. Okay, so we have our miniature schnauzer here. He's been fully prepped, bathed, double bathed. I know some uh, people in the group yesterday were talking about double bathing, but we definitely want to double bathe if we have the choice. And uh, he has been blow dried uh, with a four star and then touched up with a heated dryer. And then we have uh, done the groin in the 10, the rear end in the 10, and pop pads in a 40. I have left one pop pad to show you guys how I prepped that to get the perfect foot. So with this little guy, let me switch my hair. So with this little guy, uh, I see a lot of groomers coming in and having difficulty setting the pattern and blending it when they're doing a tan on the back. So a lot of groomers do a seven, nine, or a 10 on the back. This one's owners love a 10. I generally do a five if I have a choice in a pet trim, but this one's owners insist on a 10. So you can still get a beautiful blended groom, even with a 10, and that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today. So I'm gonna start with my wall five and one clippers set to a number 10. And now remember he's fully prepped already. So we're gonna come down the neck. I'm going to clip down, and I'm just going to get clipping. I like to finish my whole back, finish one area before I move on to the next. And notice on these coats, when you're doing a 10, a lot of people end up with a lot of track lines. The reason is, is you need to go with smaller, shorter strokes that overlap. So notice that's how I'm doing it when I do this. So I'm doing shorter strokes where every stroke matters. This is also how I get my speed up. Because every stroke, I'm not going to redo anything. I'm overlapping as I go, so that I always get the perfect cut. And I'm just coming layer by layer, switching directions with the lay of the coat, coming down. Now the schnauzer pattern, the miniature schnauzer pattern, we're gonna come right to where the white color begins and where the top of his breastbone is. That's where I'm gonna set the top of his bib here. And then we're actually gonna come right down to the elbow. So you can see the elbow poking out here. You actually need to expose that entire shoulder and a little bit of the front of the shoulder. You wanna see the shoulder and the shoulder musc uh, muscle on the miniature schnauzer. So that's a common misconception is leaving the skirt too high. Come right down to the elbow. I'm literally touching that with my clipper. Now with our five and ones, we can gently blend out. This is gonna save me scissoring. Every step I do should build on the next step so it saves me time. So I'm coming down the next line. I need to come right to that elbow again. If you look at, uh, for example, if you go to your notes for the uh, notes, uh, what's it called, notes of the grooming table, uh, book uh, Melissa Verblank, uh, you'll notice in the image of miniature schnauzer breed trim, the elbow is in front of the skirt. So pay attention to that. The skirt comes underneath the elbow, not the skirt over top of the elbow. So that's a common thing that where people are not sure where to set these lines. Remember that that elbow is in front of the skirt. 
So you need to bring the skirting right down to underneath that elbow. So the leg and the skirt are two separate things. So I always bring this line right to my elbow line. Then that helps me set the skirt up to the highest point where the rear leg connects to the body. And now as I do the skirt, notice I'm sweeping off so that I get a perfect blend. You can definitely practice this. You can see how perfectly that's blending. This takes a little practice to be able to come off the ribs and just let gravity do the work, but you can get the perfect blend. And again, now I'm not gonna have to come in and scissor all that. If I see a little bit of a tangled area, I'm going to comb it out before I hit it with my clippers. So again, in this area, I'm gonna just lightly blend it in. I'm not going full strength because I want it to blend and I'm trying to do it all with clippers so it saves me time. Now we want to see the back thigh muscle the same way we see the shoulder muscle. So we're going to come down this thigh and we want to leave the front of the back leg frill. The reason this front of the back leg frill needs to stay is because it helps us make sure the body is nice and tight. Notice how we have a lot of hair on the back of the front leg and on the front of the back leg. That makes our body shorter. So we don't have to end up, if we cut that all out, all of a sudden our body looks longer. We want it to look nice and square. So that's why we need that frill there. So when I'm coming down, I'm gonna set in my lines right to the deep curve of the leg. If I'm doing a pool, I'm gonna end up a little bit higher, but on the terrier, I like to come a bit lower. Again, this is a pet trim, this is not a show trim. And this is an owner that is requesting a 10. I don't have a choice but to use a 10 because that's what the owner wants. And so many of you as everyday pet groomers face this very situation every single day. So notice we are not blended here. This is not blended. So I need to come back. I'm going to put most of my weight on this part of the clipper. And then this part a little bit lighter so that I can blend that out. So I'm just going to come lightly, letting gravity do the work. And get that all blended in nice and perfectly. And if you look from a rear view, you'll be able to see how well that's blending in. And you just blend that out and look at our nice side view. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the bib. I'm going to come from the sideways and just lightly blend it out. There should be very little bib left. should have a nice straight from chest down to foot on that bib. So that is our complete side of the miniature schnauzer before we've even touched it with, with shears. And look how blended this skirt is. I've got a little bit in there I need to scissor. And I've also taken out the entire center of the skirt because it was matted and also the armpits and also the inside of the rear legs. This is gonna save me a ton of time and a ton of scissoring. Remember these are pet trims, not show trims. So it's very different when you're doing pet grooming. There are ways to speed up and do things fast and efficiently. And every time you can do something with clippers over scissoring, you're going to save time and be able to be more profitable. So tail. A lot of people struggle with these little stub tails. I like to come and get the entire top of the tail and just readjust this guy. Let's still look at the window. So I like to come and get the entire top of the tail. They tend to poke their tail up or twist it sideways, so I just work with it. And I just try to get every angle I can from wherever he's got a place. I'm not going to try and manipulate it at the moment. Then what I like to do is hold the top of the tail, leave a little bit of hair so I can hold the top. And, uh, and then I can come underneath and I just try to get the bum hole. And a little bit of a they touched up. If you've got little curlies in the back of their bum, I just like to hit those a little bit reverse. That gets those all touched up. Blend everything down, and then you can see that we're at quite a nice result very, very quickly without a lot of work. So we're ready to hit our dog with scissoring now. So I'm just going to blend this out a little bit more over here with our clippers. Now before I scissor, I like to come in with my clippers and do my paw pads. I've done all my paw pads but one because I want to show you guys how you're going to do your paw pads to set up your leg, your foot for scissoring. So I'm going to turn this guy and show you this last paw pad. I'm using my wall 5 and one I'm going to switch it to a 40. We did everything else in a 10 so far. So what I want to do, when I lift up this leg, I want to brush everything towards myself. 
And now I want to take off the top of the largest toe pad, just a little bit, not too much. But this is going to set my foot up for scissoring. So I'm going to come in and take that out. Now what happens is when I put that foot down, notice how that curves that up for me. It's all clear. It's all nice and curved up. That's going to help me with the scissoring, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So remember, every step should lead you to the next step, should lead you to the next stage. So now I'm going to come in. I like to start right at the nails and come almost up a little bit of the side of the toe. Now I'm going to do a little bit of the side of the toes here as well. Again, this is going to help me with my scissoring. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Be very light about it. You don't want to take off too much hair. And if your miniature schnauzer has not as much hair as this one, you're going to want to skip that part. I'm going to come in, scoop out the B section. And I like to come down both sides. And then just touch up right by the nails. I like it really clean by the nails. Okay. And it's all going to make sense when we come to scissoring the foot. I'm going to switch them back. And then actually, I think we'll scissor this foot here. I'm going to use my Super Curves by LA Sharpening, Angie at LA Sharpening. These are her, I believe they're seven inch Super Curves. They're really, really awesome. And I can't remember the exact price, but they were an awesome price as well. They're under $100, I know that. They were an awesome deal. I love them and I use them for miniature schnauzer feet, which is strange. And then I also have an eight inch from Sassy Dog Wine, which is also from Angie at LA Sharpening Leduc, Alberta, Canada. And so, our first step to setting a Greek foot on a miniature schnauzer is to come comb everything towards yourself. Remember, I've already done that paw pad clipping, but my first step is always starting underneath. And I'm gonna come and clear all the hair that is not level with the pads. Slightly angling my shear out. We want that nice bowl effect, that nice, caving effect up. So I'm just coming and clearing everything. Everything on the three sides. This side, this side, and top. I want to leave right in front of the nails for when I can look at how his weight is on the foot. Okay? So I'm going to comb it out again. You should always repeat. But the second time you repeat should be far less hair that you trim than the first time. Okay? Now what happens is when I put that foot down, as you can see, it's completely off the ground. You can see how we've got that nice curvature coming up, so we've got some nice angulation happening on this foot, which when I set his foot back where I want, makes him look like he's up on his toes, which is exactly what we want. So now I'll get you to switch to this side, and we're gonna show you the top. So, now that I've got that all set, I'm gonna come in, lift up my foot, comb everything forward. My very first cut with my super curves here, is going to be right to the nails. So I'm just hitting right where his nails are. Don't be shy, you guys can do this. And it's one straight cut. Try not to go from side to side. When you do that, you end up making a pointy foot. We don't want a pointy foot, think of a square foot. Make a square first. So now I'm gonna to come to this side of the square and this side of the square. And then all I have to do is just take off a little bit of corners, okay? Now what I like to do with this kind of stringy hair is kind of part the foot down the middle, comb part of it to one side, part of it to the other side, and then I just like to touch up. You can see the hair where it's trimmed underneath, that's where I'm gonna to trim to. And just follow right up, okay? That's just gonna set up my foot for me. Then I like to fluff it up a bit and just, you can see the really long hairs, I'm just gonna dust it in. I don't wanna take too much off, because I want to see how the leg looks naturally. Comb it all out and double check your work. Now, if your hair is properly prepped, this will be really, really easy. Set my foot down. And you can see now we've got an adorable little foot. And now what I do is just touch up anything with the foot now that it has weight on it. But you can see there's barely anything I need to touch up. I do really love these super curves because I can come and reach all sorts of areas. Now, let's save some time with scissoring this back leg by using our clippers. So I'm going to comb everything out. I'm going to come with my 5 and 1 on a 10 again. And uh, if you want to move to the rear view, I think that's going to be best for them. So from a rear view, what we want is, this is the hip and the thigh. What we want is a straight line 
or a slightly A-shaped line out to the foot, okay? Terriers generally have very tight, small feet. So that's kind of the fashion. So you might want to follow that. And that's what I've done in this case. But I'm going to fluff it out. And think about from the rear view, you want to see that nice straight line. So you guys can see we are not straight from the hip down to the floor yet. That's what we want to create though. I'm going to try and do this with clippers instead of scissors because again, anything I can do with clippers is going to save me time, which ultimately makes me more profitable. So coming down, just lightly allowing gravity. I'm just falling off the muscle and just coming slightly out and just dusting it in. So you can see how this is going to save a ton of time and then I'm just lightly going to finish off into my foot. This is why you want to scissor your foot first because you've done your clippering above here. So that's your point A. Then you've done your scissoring of the foot, which is your point B. Now you're just connecting these two worlds. That is scissoring. Scissoring should be one of the most simple steps when you're doing pet grooming. Really the focus should be on your prep work and clippering. So now I'm coming in again. I just want to touch this up, get the shape as best I can, make sure this blend is nice. Everything I can do with clippers, I'm gonna do with clippers. Saves me time, makes me money. Easier on me, easier on the dog. Now I'm left with a very cleaned up leg. And now all that's left to scissor is the profile, okay? Because we took out so much of the inside of the leg, we're left with very little to scissor. See how the inside of the leg is quite taken out? We're gonna to have to scissor down in this area. But because I took so much out, on a pet trim, remember this is a pet trim in a 10. So now my profile is very, very easy. I just comb it out. In this case, I'm gonna add a little bit of static spray just to give the hair a little bit of weight. Just a little droplets of moisture just to help the hair stay in place where I want it. Remember that scissoring is all about the combing. So I've got the hair out where I want it. Now I'm going to come in with my straight shear from again, Sassy Dog Line LA Sharpening in Ladoo. And I'm just going to follow that line from toe just right up to the skirt. Okay, now I'm going to double check on the inside. So if you want to pop over from this view, you guys can see there's some hair on the inside. You need to check your inside layer. So I'm going to come in and double and get this inside layer dealt with right to the floor where the foot is don't forget that inside layer guys because that's what sets you apart from an average groomer to a really good groomer is all these little details now i'm going to double check my foot got a little bit here i want to trim up blending in and now i'm ready to from a profile view you guys can see how nice and clean that line is beautiful leg and now I'm just gonna get my back clock area. And now notice that it's already very trimmed because of the way we did the foot. So all I have to do is come up, finish this angle. I like very angle tops on miniature schnauzers. That's what I like. So I'm just gonna continue that line, just dusting it in. Again, notice I only have to dust everything in now. It's not this major overhaul because we set everything up with our clippers. I'm going to lift the foot up just to tidy it up, follow through to the other side. And now from the side view, from the profile view, we have a lovely miniature schnauzer leg, nice and quick and easy. And from the back view, you'll see that we have a nice straight line right to the foot to the floor and that all poofed out. So now my last step on this leg is to just comb out that inside hawk and make sure that I follow through in here. I like to angle out with my straight shears and just tidy that up. Again, because we did such a good job with the foot, all I have to do is tuck it into where we did the foot. Okay. We're going to move on to our skirting here and our front leg. So we've got our front leg over here on this side guy around. There we go. I'm going to go back to a 10. Sorry, bud. Can I stand? There you go. And then I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down the front of the shoulder, right to where that leg connects and right to that elbow. 
And then we're going to dust sideways off the bib. And we come from the neck and dust straight down from the bib. Just letting gravity do the work. And I'm just going to lightly tuck it in. Again, the more I can do with my clippers, the more time I save, the more money I make. So now we've got that all prepped and ready. So I'm going to finish this front leg. So same thing, we're going to start with scissoring the bottom of the foot. We're going to clear off the pads. Everything that is not level with those pads. All the way around. Okay, double check. The second time around, you should have less to scissor than the first time. Now we're going to slip that down. And notice how that completely clears the bottom. I can put my comb through without touching anything. And it's set my leg up. And notice how that makes him look like he's up on his foot. We want him to look like he's nice and stand up and um, looking very alert on his foot. Okay, next I'm going to take this foot out, comb it out. And now remember the cardinal rule, do a straight cut across, not coming in and angling like this, otherwise you're going to end up with that pointy foot. Make it a square. Straight cut across right at the nails, comb out, side to side. Hang on there, bud. I'm going to come and square off the sides. And then all I have to do is take off the little corners. Stop. You're good. Okay, let me get this corner off. Now I don't want to touch up too much until he's standing his weight on it, especially front legs. Front legs, you want to see their weight on it because it completely changes it. So I like to think of a seam down the front of my front leg, comb half of it one direction, half the other. I'm going to comb everything this way. I'm going to come in with my super curves. And I'm just going to take everything level with the ground, slightly angled up so that I'm getting that nice bowl effect. And just following the line. Remember, since I've already set each line, then it's really easy for me to follow. I'm going to look at the inside area now. Comb to the side again. And coming in with my super curves. And I'm just scissoring up into the leg, nice and rounded. Now we're able to come in and we will check our leg work here. Right, so same thing, I'm gonna use a little spritz of some uh, Stalic spray. I'm gonna comb everything up. We're gonna do the same thing here where we're gonna try and use clippers to help us out a bit. So we've got a 10 on our five and one. We're just going to dust that in. With front legs, I like to get that little bit of bell bottom look. So I'm just coming slightly out and just tucking in at the foot slightly. Again, this is going to save me a ton of time and a ton of work. Okay. Pull me out. You can dust the front as well. You want to dust that right down to the front toes. And that's going to save me a lot of time and effort. So now I'm just going to comb out and I'm going to have just dusting to come in with my stretchers. And we'll see at the back of the leg. Okay. And in the front. I like to do that straight line from shoulder to the toe. Okay. You can see how amazing that's looking. And then I'm going to turn. And get the inside of his front legs. Now, from this view, I can shake his leg out and comb to the side, and you'll be able to see there's a little bit here that needs to be dusted in just to even things out. And then you'll see on the inside, we've got quite a bit that needs to be evened out. But my line starts right here, so I can just follow that through. And with front legs, I like to tip in a little bit as I get to the, the armpit area just to keep it clean. Again, this is a pet trim, so I can do little cheats like that just to help the haircut maintain longer. I'm gonna comb everything to the side again. Come in, get that all scissored up. Comb it all out. See how it's looking with his weight on it. It's looking very, very good. Then I'll just come in with my 
Super curves, and I'm just going to touch up any little things that are sticking out. Now I like to, from this side, I like to finish off this bib. So I'm just going to come in with my curves and just follow through the shape of this body. Okay. That cleans that up. And again, because we took out the center of the chest, this cleans up really nice and it's easy to scissor. You don't have multiple layers under there to scissor. This is how you can groom faster and more efficiently. Okay, let's do our skirt to finish up this side, and then we'll go to our head. Pulling out our skirt, I like to lift the front leg up, pull it out with that little spritz. And now our skirt should not be very long. The skirt is only to add depth of chest. And again, remember that that front leg comes in front of the skirt. That's a key feature on the miniature schnauzer that I see a lot of groomers miss, is that the front leg actually comes in front of the skirt. So just remember that. And we want the highest point in the curve to be just falling off that last rib in his rib cage. So we actually want this to be kind of the highest point. So I like to find the highest point, which is right off that back rib. Come in, watch out for his wiener if he's a dog, a male. But come in and I like to cut that first. Then I know where I'm going to. Then I'm going to come into my straight shears and just come up to that point. And again, this is really easy to scissor because I've taken out the center. All in here is naked, so I only have just a little uh, curtain to, sh to scissor, which is super easy and then it's easy for a pet maintenance. Now you could do this with thin shears, chunkers if you're more comfortable. I like my finishing shears, but you can do whatever makes you comfortable. There's no right or wrong in grooming, so, you know, do what works for you. Now I'm just going to follow through that line from my leg, okay? Then in this case, if I want to come in, I'm going to use my Curve Thinners from LA Sharpening. This is Sassy Dog Line again from Angie at LA Sharpening. That's a Curve Thinner. And I'm just going to lightly take off any any little things that are not quite matching, especially in this little area, it's hard to blend with the clippers. So that's mainly where I'm focusing. I'm just softening this skirt a little bit. Just stand away. I just like the skirt to be a little bit softer looking. See, that's our miniature schnauzer from the side, nice and quick and easy. Looks gorgeous, pretty dog, and we're super blended, even though it's a 10 on the body, and we blend it into completely natural skirt and legs. Okay, okay let's go in and do our head trim here. Uh, I'm a sitting groomer, so I train all my dogs to lay down for their head trims. Come on, buddy. There you go. Except for this guy, apparently. Come on, turn around, come on. Or he can stand with you. Yeah, there we go. Come on. And I actually prefer my miniature schnauzers to lay down, especially for clipping the ears. So see how he wants to lay his head to the side? That's because that's how I train them. Because then I can lay his head and put his ear on top of my own fingers and put pressure on his head and then that way he doesn't whip his head every time he hears something and you nick that schnauzer ear. I know everybody struggles on these schnauzer ears yeah. and it just gives me a little bit more control. So I like to come in with my 15 and I like to hold that ear nice and flat up high. So I'm sticking my fingers nice and high under there, pulling that flat down. And I like to start at the top of the ear. Think of small layers. First I'm going to get all around the top. Flattening out that little wrinkle at the front there. See, I've got my finger up in there. But in that, I'm always moving out from the center. And I've got my finger under there to support. And now notice, because my hand's on his head, I can feel if he's going to react to something. And then that way I can back out of there quickly in case something happens. Okay? Now I've got that top part. Now I've got somewhere to put my thumb to work on the rest. So now I can come and start working on the rest.
See how everywhere I do, I clip her so that I can now hold that area. And then I can move down here across my other fingers. And because I can set my hand on his head, I can keep him in control. And I don't get that whipping and fighting with them all over the table to try and clip his ear. And this works super great for doing the inside. I've done his inside already, but same thing. See, when he wanted to look at the camera, I could just put a little pressure on his head and remind him that no, we're working on a, a dangerous area right now. So I can come up, get all those edges, and I push the edges right against my fingers. I'm using a 40 right now on the inside of the ear. And I can clean that all up. And again here, and I'm just gonna push that edge right against my palm. And then that leaves me very little, little to scissor. Coming around my ear. Pulling it out, finishing it off. And then we've got our nice schnauzer ear without cutting him or not having control of his head while we were trying to uh, trim his head. Okay, so for the miniature schnauzer, I'm gonna use a 10. Just let me finish up this ear as well. Same thing, now I can turn his head and have the same kind of control on this side. So this one I can just put a little weight on him, which keeps his head in control. Which a lot of you, every girl has faced it, that terrifying miniature schnauzer ear. Because the schnauzers just, they're kind of a terrier, they love to just look at everything. They love to whip their heads around, they notice everything, they hear everything. So it just can be one of the scariest ears to bend. So I find that having them lay down helps me a lot to maintain control. Okay, now I'm gonna come in. Take our hair here. I'm gonna go with my 10. And in this case, because he's a pet and his body's in a 10, I'm gonna do the top of his head in a 10. I typically like to go with a dark purple in reverse so I can get a very boxy, rectangular looking head. But in this case, we're gonna go with our 10. I'm just gonna clear everything off, right down the neck. And again, shorter strokes that overlap. See how every stroke matters so I get a nice, smooth finish. That way I'm not going over this dog a million times or having to back brush to get a beautiful finish. Every little thing matters to getting a very efficient groom. From front and right to that front. I'm going to come right to where the brows connect. I'm going to blend right into the ear. And then I like to do about a clipper whips down the cheek. Because I've clipped that inside of the ear, I can just come connect to that. And take the whole cheek off and right blend it into that neck. Now underneath, I'm going to follow through pretty much from the eye corner down. And I'm going to come a little bit tighter underneath. And we're going to do the same on this side. Again, because I've shaved the inside of this ear, I can just connect that all up and see how that's all nice and clean now. I see a lot of groomers that miss stuff in this ear area or behind the ear. If you follow step by step, you're never going to miss anything. So then I know that this area is done. And ready to go. And I want that to angle down a bit, so I'm going to come cut it a bit. Okay. Now I am going to come back with my dark purple guard comb to touch up a few things here. So I'm going to grab my dark purple, switch to a 40. And I'm just going to come forward over the eyebrows very, very lightly, just to change them. Once I've tamed those, my next step is to make sure my beard is all combed out. Make sure his beard all combed out, it's looking good. Got a little tangle right here. Oh, miniature schnauzer doesn't have tangles. Okay. And now, one of my first steps in doing a nice miniature schnauzer face is going to be a nice straight shear, straight up and down. And what I'm going to do is we need to line up with that cheek. 
So from this view, you can see the hair that's poking out. That's not in line with that cheek. So I'm going to comb out. Nope, nope. Pull it out. And line my share up with that cheek. And you're just going to cut off straight up, even the brow. Don't be shy. I know it seems scary, but you want to level off with that cheek. Okay? So then your next step is going to be comb that out again and just tuck it in a bit. So that's going to set up your brow. Now I'm going to come in with my curved chunkers again. I can just reach better with my curves. I can go sideways and get this center. Come under this brow sideways and get that center. I'm doing about a pinky width wide between the brows. And then I'm going to come directly under the eyes and clean that up. I'm leaving as much part and weight on the, on the face beard as I can and the mustache because it looks a lot nicer if I have to trim that off. And these guys like very short brows on him, so we're not going to do them long, but I'll show you how I left one so you can see both. So I'm just going to make sure right under those eyes is nice and cleaned up. The brows shouldn't be covering up the eyes. They should be accentuating them. So you do want to make sure you can see this eye under here. And if they have extra brown discharge or something like this guy does, I make sure I remove all that because it's only going to get worse if you leave it there. And again, this is a pet trim, not a show trim. Okay. So once I have that all dealt with, so I've got my side cut in, I've got my center cut, I've got under my eyes done. Now it's time to finish off this beard and then finish off our brow. So I'm going to pull that brow forward. And what I like to do is come in with a straight shear outside corner of the nose and then the tips of my shears are going to that cheek okay and that's going to be my cut line so to the cheek and the outside corner of the nose okay and then i'm going to use my thinning shears just to touch up the inside of the brow and pull it this way a bit and now for short brows you just want to pull that brow sideways and cut Okay, so then he's got a very short brow there. If you want to do a longer brow, we'll do a longer one on this side. Same thing, we're going to want to comb out and level with the cheek. So level that beard and side of the brow. You want to find his eye in there with his cheek. Okay, slightly tucking in at the bottom. See that? And now instead of combing the brow to the side and then scissoring that, see if we comb it to the side. And then if I were to come from outside corner of the nose to his cheek, we would get a very short brow, which works great for Airedales and things like that, or a dog that wants short brows. But if you want a longer brow, comb it forward and do the same thing. So I'm going to set that and cut and see how it can end up with a longer brow outside corner of the nose and tips to the cheek. So see, so you should be able to see his eye very clearly from a side view when he opens his eye. And then I wouldn't do much touching up on the inside if I want a longer brow. He wants shorter brows, so we are going to comb to the side, and outside corner of the nose, to that cheek, and cut. And that's how we can get that much shorter brow and then touch up the inside. And that's how I like to do my very short brows. And some owners like short brows, some like long, depends on the owner. And then I like to check from the side view and make sure the eyelashes underneath are also looking good. So you can see he's got a few little eyelashes under there. So make sure everything looks good. Now we just need to finish off our beard. So we're going to pull our beard down. We've got the whole side done. We've got the brows looking good. I'm going to comb that down. Now I'm just going to follow through at an angle just right from that cheek and quite a steep angle down. Okay. And if I want to, if you've got a very poofy haired, if the hair on the beard just keeps the mustache keeps poking out, I like to come in with my thinner and just gently brush through the edge. Use the thinning teeth 
to comb through it. What that's going to do is wrap it under nicely. Okay, and just a few spikes like that can round that under and train that hair to go underneath. Okay, we'll just repeat whatever we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. Okay, come in and meet that up. Nice angle down. Come in with my thinners and just comb through. So in this case, the curves are hard to do, combing through that way, so I have to go this way. And I just want to be pulling those teeth through to wrap it under. And I need to comb this beard a few times and check it because every time you're holding it, you're going to end up with things that pop out. So I've got a few things that popped out on the side, so I'm going to touch it up. Come through, comb through with my thinners, round it under, and soften it up. And then always repeat on the other side. You can see what we've had pop out here. So we can come in and touch it up. Remember that combing, combing, combing is what makes you a good scissor. You have to comb. And then last but not least, I like to check the front. I like to set my fingers just right on his top gums. And that way I can get just a nice little view of how this whole beard is looking. And the front, I always like to just do thinners and just barely touch it. But you can see that my thinning sherry on the side has rounded this a bit already. So all I have to do is just connect that. Okay. And that is our miniature schnauzer face. Let me get this guy up so you guys can take a final little peek at him. Come on, buddy. And I'll finish his other side quickly afterwards. Oh, Pull him out. So you guys can take a look at that. So I'm going to finish his other side. For those of you joining now, we just did one side of this pet miniature schnauzer trim. And now a groom like this, just to give you guys an idea when I'm not teaching it live, would be about a 30 minute groom. So the whole dog of 30 minutes. So you can definitely speed up your time and still have amazing quality work and blend out things like a 10 into full length skirt and legs with using clippers in intelligent ways. And this makes you a faster, more efficient groomer, which ultimately increases your income. And it's also a very inexpensive way to increase your income. So we've got our miniature schnauzer here. I'll just pop back on there, thank you. So I am Dana Alexander with Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Grimmer. I hope you enjoyed that and got some good tips. And uh, let me know what other type of things you guys wanna see. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.